Morning all. All right, so team history time. We are going to talk about the combined history of the Minnesota North Stars and the Dallas Stars. And this is a point of contention when I talk about team histories. It happens every time. Uh, you can't talk about this because that team moved, that's not that same team. But it's the same franchise. If you look at NHL records, it's the same franchise. So, as a for instance, if the Minnesota North Stars had won a Stanley Cup, it would count towards the Dallas Stars count. Of course, the one Stanley Cup is Dallas's from 1999, which doesn't make Minnesota North Star fans feel happier about how things ended in Minnesota in 1993. Uh, the interesting thing with Minnesota and Dallas is how convoluted everything gets because the Minnesota North Stars merged with the Cleveland Barons in 1978. And then when the San Jose Sharks came in, there was this weird expansion draft where players got it, got drafted from one another and you end up with guys going from Minnesota to San Jose and guys being expansion drafted into Minnesota. Basically, the idea that the San Jose Sharks were a continuation of the California Golden Seals, who became the Cleveland Barons, and then um, ended up merging with the Minnesota North Stars. Interestingly enough, uh, Cleveland and Minnesota merged. It didn't create a super team. You might have thought, you know, putting two franchises together, that's not really fair. I can only imagine the uproar now if, if one team just was merged with another in the NHL. Um, it, would, it would drive everybody crazy, right? But in this case, it didn't. Now... The Minnesota North Stars, good history. Dallas Stars, decent history. But the one thing that stands out with this organization is how often they miss the playoffs. So we'll get into that because that to me stands out for the fact that it, it doesn't get talked about a lot. We talk about franchises that struggle and Dallas doesn't really, they're kind of in that mushy middle, right? They don't get as much attention as other teams either. <clears throat> but the all-time points leader in the franchise's history, so this is Minnesota plus Dallas, and a legend in both locations, Mike Medano, 1,459 games played, 557 goals, 802 assists, 1,359 points as a Dallas star. He should have spent his entire career in Dallas. That one year in Detroit didn't, didn't do anything for him. So Neil Broughton's number two on the list. He played for Minnesota, moved on, and then came back and played for Dallas. 992 games in total, 274 goals, 593 assists, 867 points. And Neil Broughton's one of those guys, I was a huge fan of his. I was excited to see him win a Stanley Cup in, in New Jersey, even though I had wished that, uh, that he was on that Dallas team. Jamie Benn, 948 games played. I don't think Neil Broughton was on that 99 team. No, he had retired by 1999. His last year was in 97. He came back and played for Dallas. He won the 95 Cup with the New Jersey Devils. So again, I was glad to see him win a Stanley Cup, just sad he didn't do it in Dallas. Uh, Jamie Benn, 948 games played, all in Dallas, of course. He's drafted after they moved. Uh, 329 goals, 440 assists, 769 points. And if you'd asked me years ago, do you think do you think Ben hits 1,000 points before he retires? My answer would have unequivocally been yes. Now, I don't know. That's another 300 or 231 points. He should. But then the question becomes, does he, does he do that in Dallas? So his scoring's dropped off a bit. We'll see if it bounces back under Peter DeBoer. Um... Brian Bellows, 753 games played, 342 goals, 380 assists, 722 points. Underrated player in his age because there was a lot of goal scoring going on, but Bellows was a good player. <clears throat> Dino Cicerelli, Hall of Famer, 602 games in Minnesota, 332 goals, 319 assists, 651 points. And his goal scoring was on display in the 81 run to the final by the Minnesota North Stars. That made me a huge North Stars fan. Uh, and, and I mean, Dino Cicerelli, it's a fun name for a little kid, right? Uh, so Tyler Sagan is right underneath him, uh, 622 games, 249 goals, 316 assists, 565 points. Uh, makes me feel old seeing how many games Sagan's played in, in Dallas and seeing that he's now in his thirties. Uh, Bobby Smith, 572 games played, 185 goals, 369 assists, 554 points. And another player who had to leave Minnesota to get a Stanley Cup. He got that Stanley Cup in Montreal and then came back and, and played and retired as a Minnesota North Star. Uh, Sergei Zubov, uh, he did win a Stanley Cup ring in Dallas. He won one in New York as well uh, with the Rangers. 839 games played, 111 goals, 438 assists, 549 points. Zubov, absolute legend, one of my favorite defensemen ever. Um, Gagne, 609 games, 247 goals, 287 assists, 534 points. Dave Gagne was very good uh, for some of those seasons there. And yeah, I, I liked him in Minnesota. Um, he, he crossed into, into Dallas territory there as well. Uh, Brendan Morrow, 835 games played, 243 goals, 285 assists, 528 points. 
Absolutely fantastic career for Morrow. I should mention Darian Hatcher because he's not on the board anywhere. Darian Hatcher, uh, one of my favorite Minnesota North Stars when he was playing and, and, and Dallas Star as well. And of course, briefly, feels like too briefly, both Hatcher brothers were members of the Dallas Stars. Um, now, wins leaders, uh, Marty Turco, 262 wins, a player who I think was an excellent goaltender who played on Minis or on Dallas teams that weren't championship caliber. So sadly, it came back on Turco where people are like, well, you can't win a series with Turco. You can't win a series when you're Dallas. Had nothing to do with Turco in my eyes anyways. Uh, Kari Lettinen, 216 wins as a Dallas star. Ed Bell, 460 Cesar Maniago, 143, that of course being with the Minnesota North Stars. Same with Joe Malosh and his 141 wins. So if Jake Ottinger is going to crack that list, well, it's going to take a while. I would think at least three years, right? So anyways, this list is pretty safe right now, unless Hudobin somehow ended up on it. All right, now, getting into retired numbers. Uh, the retired numbers for the organization, Neil Broughton's number seven, number eight, Bill Goldsworthy, Number nine, Mike Medano. Number 19, Bill Masterton, who the trophy is named after as well. Number 26, Yeri Lettinen. And number 56, Sergei Zubov, the most recent to get his number retired. Uh, you have to think that when Jamie Benn's days are done in the, in the NHL, he's probably going to get his number retired. Um, trying to think. I've already retired Broughton. I don't think Dino's number goes. Because again, if they were still the Minnesota North Stars, probably. And that's where things get a little bit murky is that it's highly unlikely the Dallas Stars would retire the number of a guy who just played in Minnesota and played back in the 80s. Wouldn't have any any impact with current Dallas fans. But anyways, um, again, it's that whole combined history side of things, right? Now, playoffs. And this is where it's interesting. Uh, in their last 14 seasons, Dallas has missed the playoffs nine times. Uh, but in 2000, going back as far as 2000, the year after their, their only Stanley Cup, they lost in the final in six games against the New Jersey Devils. 2001, they lose in the second round against St. Louis. That's in four straight. They don't do well against St. Louis. Uh, 2003, they lost in the second round against Anaheim in six. 2004, they lost in the first round against Colorado in five. 2006, they lose in the first round against Colorado in five. And again, this is where Turco's reputation for not being able to win in the playoffs gets going. 2007, they lose in the first round against Vancouver in seven games. And whether it's Minnesota or Dallas, doesn't matter. They've never beaten Vancouver, not in a playoff series. 2008, they lose the conference final in six games against Detroit. 2014, so from 2008 till 2014, nothing. 2014, they lost in the first round against Anaheim in six. Uh, 2016, they lost in the second round against St. Louis in seven. 2019, back in the playoffs, back in the second round, back against St. Louis. And back losing in seven yet again. Uh, 2020, they lost in the final, of course, against the Tampa Bay Lightning in six. Missed the playoffs in 2021. And the year we just had, 2022, they lose in the first round against Calgary in seven. So game sevens, uh, they, their record not fantastic. They lost a game seven in 2007, 2016, 2019, and 2022. So, yeah, there's that. Uh, so, again, missing playoffs nine in the last 14 seasons. Just the one Stanley Cup in the team's history. Their arena since 2002 is what is currently known as American Airlines Center. Uh, before that, they played in Reunion, Reunion Arena. And the arena they had in Minnesota before they moved was the Metropolitan Sports Center, which, of course, is not where the Minnesota Wild play. But for, uh, for Dallas, this has been a good run. Uh, their attendance is, it feels like their attendance is low at times, and we don't hear a lot of discussions about Dallas's attendance, but it's not so low that it becomes a, a real issue, right? Uh, their coaching history, they've had 25 coaches, their 25th coach recently being hired, which is Peter DeBoer. Uh, Ren Blair was their first coach for 147 games, a record of 48, 65, and 34, the 34 being ties. Now, the idea of bringing in DeBoer is a simple one. They want goals. They want more goals. The teams in recent years have had trouble scoring. It's an issue I've talked about many times with Dallas, the, the frustration, because the talent is there. Uh, guys who may end up on this list at some point in their careers, I would think Rope hints. Jason Robertson has to get on this list at some point. And so, yeah, for Dallas, uh, it, it feels like this is potentially a make-or-break season for them. So, Ren Blair, first coach, Peter DeBoer, the current coach, no record for them. Uh, the first goal that the Minnesota North Stars ever had was actually Bill Masterton that scored it. 
at 15 minutes and 20 seconds of the second period against St. Louis in a 2-2 tie. Uh, the most recent goal by the Minnesota North Stars back in 93, uh, that was Alf Dahlen at 19 minutes and 11 seconds of the third period in a 5-3 loss against the Detroit Red Wings. So uh, the interesting thing with that is the first goal that the Dallas Stars had was Neil Broughton at 3.51 of the first in a 6-4 to win over Detroit. So, Minnesota's time as the North Stars ends against Detroit. The Dallas Stars start against Detroit. There you go. And then, the most recent goal for Dallas was scored by Vlad Nemesnikov at 2 minutes and 17 seconds of the second period in what would be a 3-2 to uh, overtime loss against the Calgary Flames in Game 7. So, there you go. Now, the all-time penalty minutes leader, Shane Chirilla. There was a time in the late 80s where Minnesota had two of the toughest guys in the league in Churla and McRae, and it was kind of ridiculous because they were genuinely two of the toughest uh, of the enforcers in the National Hockey League. Uh, Churla and McRae, uh, they play together, and it just it, it was intimidating to the opposition. Um, not that they won cups with them, but still intimidating. Uh, season records, well, for goals, there's two players that have hit 55 goals. First, Dino Cicerelli in 81-82, and then Brian Bellows did it in 89-90. Uh, your assists all time, Broughton, 76, 85, 86 was when he had 76 assists. I do kind of expect that Jason Robertson at some point in his career could break that 55 goal mark. Uh, points, Bobby Smith had the most points in this team's history with 114 in a season in 81, 82. As good as Medano was, and he was excellent, he was never a 100 point guy. He was never, he was never really that... That guy who was going to push towards an Art Ross trophy, he was just an excellent, he was a leader, good goal scorer, good point producer. He could hit 50 goals, he could hit 90, 95 points, but again, that dynamic offense. Um, maybe it's just a thing with the North Star slash Stars over in general. Uh, so penalty minutes all time in one season, 382 by Basil McRae in 87-88. So uh, again, McRae and Churla were fantastic. Uh, wins Turco with 41 in a season in 0506, and again the storyline became in 2006 he got all those wins in the regular season, just one win in the playoff loss against Colorado. Now their best draft picks, uh, going through and picking guys who were picked late in the draft that ended up being pretty darn good. You've got Jamie Ben, number 129 in 2007, which is mentioned a lot in broadcasts. Absolutely. Uh, number 192 in 2001 was UC Okanen, who would play for a lot of teams in his career, but he was drafted by the Dallas Stars. Uh, Yeri Lettinen in 1992 was the number 88 draft pick. Excellent two-way forward, just phenomenal, really excellent. Uh, 2010, they drafted John Klingberg, 131st overall. Now, as I'm recording this, he could be headed to the market. He could be leaving the Dallas Stars organization, but drafted 131st. They've got some good mileage out of him. Uh, drafted 196th in 1989 was Artur Serbe. Now, I mentioned earlier the, the expansion draft that they went through with San Jose. In all of that, Urbe ends up being a San Jose Shark. Uh, if not, he may very well have stayed in Minnesota. Who knows what might have happened if not for that expansion. But uh, either way, Dallas is the team that drafts him in 1989. Now, first round picks that played less than 100 games is a long list in part because They've been in the league since 1967, where they drafted Wayne Cheeseman, fourth overall that year. He didn't play a game. 1968, they draft fifth. They draft Jim Benzelock. Didn't play a game in the NHL either. 1972, drafting 12th, they draft Jerry Byers. He played 43 games in the NHL. Uh, 1981, drafting third, they draft Ron Meehan, who played 48 games that year. Uh, 1984, drafting 13th overall, David Quinn. Played zero games in the National Hockey League. Number 17 in 1986 was Warren Babe. He played 21 games in the NHL, which was too bad because the name Babe. Like, that's that's great, right? Um, maybe more suited to baseball. Might have chosen the wrong I'm just kidding. Uh, number 20 in 1994 is Jason Botterill. He played 88 games in the NHL. Um, brother of Jen. Number 26 in 2001 was Jason, ba Jason Bakashua, who played... Uh, 38 games in the NHL, and he's one of those that you want to look at goalie of the future. I remember Dallas, you know, touting, this is our goalie of the future. We're going to be fine. This guy's going to be great. And then it just didn't turn out. Uh, Martin Wagner was drafted 26th overall in 2002. He played zero NHL games. Number 27 in 2006 was Ivan Vishnevsky. He would play five games in the NHL. 
2009, highly thought of prospect, Scott Glennie taken at 8th. And I remember people saying, Scott Glennie's going to be an absolute steal. He only ended up playing one NHL game. Uh, 2014, Julius Honka drafted 14th overall, played 87 games. He's gone home to Europe. Uh, I haven't seen any signs of him coming back to the NHL at this point. And it, it feels like maybe that ship has sailed. And yeah, that's why he's on the board with just the 87 games played in the NHL. It's too bad. He just didn't quite fit in with Dallas. And so there we are. But the overall history of Minnesota and Dallas has been interesting. And again, they do miss the playoffs more than I think people realize. Um, I, I'm always surprised when they, they managed to. Like this year, they had a decent season. Uh, that being said, I, I kind of wish they'd, they'd closed it out a bit sooner. They kind of backed into that playoff spot. But still, they got in. Uh, which means it's 9 out of 14 they've missed and not 10 out of 14. So it can always be worse. So there you go. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below regarding the history of the Minnesota North Stars and Dallas Stars. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.